Hello and welcome to Social Media Buzz. I am Perpetua Fasumi Peter. Well, we have three words that are buzzing on social media. We have Southeast, Mauritania and Shawore. We start with Southeast. Sequel to Ondo State Governor Rotimi Akwedolu's letter to his party, urging it to zone presidency to the South. Many Nigerians have renewed their call for Southeastern presidency. And here are some of the tweets. Uh, we have this very first one from at Adenyo Judeji saying, it is better for the North to keep power than for Southwest if Southeast won't get it. It's too much injustice for Southwest to still get presidency after eight years vice president slot. Any zoning that does not put Southeast first in the interest of equity is a fraud. And then we have at Henry Shield asking a question. He says, sensible answers only. What is the reason APC is not considering the Southeast for its presidential ticket? Does it mean its members from the zone are, well, he put a word there. And then we have at Akogun first responding to him saying, because elections are won based on number, resources, and popularity. What is the acceptance rate of APC in the Southeast? How do you expect a political party to zone its ticket or even win election in the region where it is not accepted? Can you win election with 5% popular vote? And we have another person responding. This is at Danny S. M. Loloi saying, one, APC not considering Southeast seem misleading as none of the two main parties is restricted a ticket to any zone for now. And then at number two, we have APC has aspirants from the Southeast, Omahi, Rochas. And finally, we have Southeast is not APC stronghold. So we can't expect the zone to have so much aspirants. Well, these are the reactions to what's trending right now. And if you ask me, I'll say it appears the major political parties are trending with caution. You know, on the one hand, we have information. Well, let, let me not say information. You know, there is this... Um, there's um, talk around that maybe the president wants a consensus candidate, even though that has not been substantiated in any way. But then what's happening with the parties? Why is it anyone saying anything about, are we really zoning or is it that we are not zoning? Uh, let's start with you. Well, PDP is clear on it. Um, they've, they've made it an open contest. Mm -hmm. They're not you know, ready to zone. Um, but you have the aspirants to strike from the southern part of the country asking that it has to be zoned to you know, the south. So you have the likes of um, the River State Governor, Yesom Wike, uh, among others, Peter will be clamoring that it should be zoned to the south, including Peter Ayodele uh, Fayeshe, the former State Governor. So that's PDP on one hand. For the APC, it looks like it was cast in stone that um, the presidency will be zoned to the south. But now... Yeah, like considering the fact that we had this swap thing a while ago, and mm -hmm. we all thought, okay, it's sorted. It's sorted. So now, the, the various, um, you know, um, gimmicks or games being played underneath, which have not yet bubbled to the surface. And that's why um, we had the Ondo State Governor, who probably has more intel than we Any do, you know, mm -hmm. um, s you know, speaking up for the southern governors, um, for the southern, you know, part of the country in terms of the party. Again, it boils down to the interest of the party. You should understand that the um, number one aim or objective of a political party is to wrestle power. To win elections. You know, to win elections. So political parties would always go for decisions that they think are favorable to their chances of winning the election. The question is, as the um, other fellow commented, if the APC zones to the southeast, for example, can they win mm. the election from, you know, a, using a um, flag bearer from the southeast? It looks likely no, because even the party isn't that popular in the southeastern region. But don't region. you think that once they make that decision, a lot of people would want to queue behind whoever they bring on board? Well, because if we have a Fanny Ferry, mm -hmm. we even have some northern elders also saying, you know what, let's go to southeast. Well, so uh, when we are having all of these conversations coming, shouldn't people, you know, shouldn't they think that, okay, since it's coming from the people, if we do it, a lot of persons will queue behind whoever we present. I think it, we need to hear mm -hmm. uh, from her now. Well, what I think is, like you just said, it may happen, but you know this is policies. We can tell what would happen. Like um, something like you said, the principal goal of every political party is to win election. Absolutely. So we cannot say what if, what if. They have to be clear on what happens. Plus, because what if it doesn't happen? What if everybody does not? Like he said, it's not so popular in the southeast, and that's the truth. APC is not so popular there. So what if they do that and 
where we're expecting the, the support it doesn't go to where they are expecting that means it's a loose it's a it's a loose loose situation for them so we cannot in politics there's nothing like what if they have to be something that they have, it's happened before so they are they clear can really something they can to. hold on to so i think basically that's what it is would have just said more but of course there are other things to talk about let's yeah. go to the second story for the second story this is on mauritania uh now popular nigerian biker kunle adenyo jew has continued to share his experiences while riding from lagos from london on to Lagos. He's not here yet. He's still in our neighbor country. <laughs> He's a neighboring country. In a series of tweets, the writer shared how unwelcoming Mauritanians were to him. Describing his experience, he said, to me, Mauritania is the worst place anyone can be in and a place I never want to visit again. Even before the final episode of the Daylight Robbery, where he shared a lot of things about uh, what he experienced, I think I'll just take some of uh, his tweets where he was really, really explaining what happened to him while he was there. He said, um, okay, I think I'll just summarize rather than read his tweets. That will take us a lot of time. He said the country actually, uh, they did something to their currency so much so that um, a, one euro now exchanged to 40 instead of 400. But what they do is, if you're a foreigner, they sell to you at the previous price. Let's use Nigeria as an example. Let's say now, let's say Nigeria for now we, we exchange about 500 to a dollar and then somehow we're able to work around it so much so that we now exchange 15 around to one dollar but for every foreigner that comes in we sell to them at that initial rate so he really complained about it. and apart from said it felt like there was a cartel between the customs and a lot of persons all they just want to do is to rob you of everything and anything you come in with he was really angry he shared his experiences but then uh, let's put, just check out one or two of the things he shared and also look at what nigerians were saying he said however the whole country still fraudulently sell things to foreigners at the old rate thereby charging you 10 times more for purchases and this cuts across all aspects of their economy in I patronized hotel, restaurant, fuel station, and government agencies. Apart from that, he says that carcass, that uh, animal carcass, mm -hmm. litter the roads and all of that. And he was like, this is not the only desert we know. I have been to other deserts, and it's not even like this. Well, Nigerians responded. This is at Kden KSS saying, Mauritania is one of the most racist countries in the world. A place so racist, they quit ECOWAS because they didn't want to be in a union with black nations. A place so racist, Slavery still exists in mass numbers. It's definitely one of the worst places in the world. And this is a Mauritanian saying, as a Mauritanian, I apologize to you for what I noticed in my country, but I feel disappointed and I think you were not fair. The question is not fair how? Is it that he's not being fair for sharing on social mm. media? Should he have kept quiet about it? And fair all of that. Fair could also be an exaggeration in that sense. Maybe, okay, maybe well, she didn't explain. Maybe if this person had explained it, it would have been better. Final, final one we have says, watched a documentary on some Moroccan truck drivers delivering goods to Senegal, and they confessed that the worst part of their journey was always Mauritania, a dead country. You want to say something? <laughs> really have I what well, I want to just have in mind to say is the fact that corruption now is not just a Nigerian thing and that's yeah. it. So if so those who are um or because I am a Nigerian I have to be patriotic to my country. So the fact people who are always sitting on Nigeria we will not think that uh, at least Nigerians are welcoming. That's just all I have to say. Yeah. Well we raised several you know issues. There's the place of mm. racism. We talked about exploitation you know, among other things, considering he's an African, black mm. skin. Mm. So it also raises the issue of, you know, black injustice yeah, against black. black. Again, for all of these things, you have to understand that it's not just limited to a country, mm. although so, so it, definitely it more countries, cross, yeah. you know, would probably exhibit it more than other countries. Again, it just speaks to our common humanity as people to do better, you know, in terms of our common humanity. You need to be kind to the next person. It doesn't Don't cost a thing. From. It doesn't yeah. cost a thing, really. I think at this point, I was just saying Nigeria is actually good. So very large. Yeah. I think we're welcoming. Yeah. We're going to make you feel good. And he shared experiences of how he was welcomed by Rotarians in other countries, how that he just enjoyed being in those countries. But I don't know why Mauritania did that to him. Maybe that's who they are. And finally, we have this funny one. This is about Shohure. You know, this is funny because Shohure took campaign to the lake. You've seen, can, can we see the pictures where Shumaria is having his rally? Look at that. I, I really, what do you call this? <laughs> it's campaigning. It's campaigning. What he, kind of rally he, is this? <laughs> them, so he's, he's doing that for them, right? Like, oh, really? You yes. like it? Well, I, I wouldn't say I like it. I wouldn't say I hate it. Too. I, I'm just, well, it's something out of the normal. So it's out of the usual. So it's not, it's not cliche. So let's just say that um, someone thinking, <laughs> I, I don't know, out of the box or what, what well, would you call well, that? Well, you, you know, that, uh, for certain reverend, Areas you yeah. have to 
so you definitely go through yeah. both and all. And then probably just got in the midst of um, you know several fishermen, fishermen and, and all, to and decided to just be, you know, be part them, of them. You know? Sometimes you know it's all part of you know it could be a photo op, it could be part of mm. you photo know, op, it could be part of <laughs> the process. Sometimes you want to relate. Really I don't to, think that's a photo op. For conversation we, is. We, we need to also mm -hmm. understand that in politics, sometimes especially when you want to connect with the grassroots, you also need to come down to their level and you okay. know give them that sense of belonging. You don't go to a rural areas where you know the stack literacy and you begin mm, to speak you know Queen's English, English you're, you're lost so again I understand the place of politics or photo up and all of that but it could also be just trying to relate with them and mm. come down to their level regardless of what it is one thing you cannot take away from the man is the fact that he's doing so well for himself in terms of his politics it may not have paid dividends mm. but you have to give him credit the last election if said 30 states we know those who didn't visit even three states I mean, philadelphia was one that so many youths were clamoring on. He didn't visit six states. I'm saying this authoritatively. Show a reference that 30. So, but you know, again, this if, thing if, about if he's going him, about it this way, that peop, some persons polarized like, figure, I get all of that. Again, you can't fault the man in terms of how he's going about, you know, trying to reach out to people. Let's see what people are saying. We have at Sadiq Tade saying, show that go. Shora go tell you say PDP and APC no day serious, but he went day, <laughs> but he went day serious. The campaign inside C, and then we have at favor Afolabi saying, is there still any living Nigerian that still takes Shora seriously? And Adebola says aquatic president Shora. That's 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 funny. Aquatic president Shora, and then we have at John Fanny Woku saying Shora and his kids. Okay. Well, finally, I, I like this last mm -hmm. one. This last one says, at least if you don't get Godfather, you go get Mommy and Papi. <laughs> oh, wow. Water. Well, well, Nigerians will always look for the comedy out of everything. But the thing is, mm -hmm. Mommy and Papi, Water cracks. I'm um, sure this kind of person may not be, so many people may not agree with him, but that doesn't stop the fact that he is doing what he's doing, that he feels comfortable, mm -hmm. he feels it's the right thing to do. At he least, feels, at least, to, looks ridiculous to me. It looks yeah, ridiculous. The same way it looks ridiculous to some people when you had the governor eating corn by it's the road or so plating hair and all of that. And oh, that doesn't letting look, letting hair or carry water. Personally, that carry water thing comes when it's time for election. But Shumara has always been like this. You know, yeah, so, okay. so it's what it is. I understand, you know, it could be comical and all of that. Um, it's what it is, really. <laughs> I, I think this, this is it. I, I like the fact that the show ended in a very, very happy note. Yeah. Well, it's not, it's not a good time to end the show right now. Thank you so much, people, for joining us. I'll leave you. We would rather leave you with a quote from Swami Vivekananda. It says, take, take up one idea. Make that idea your life. Think of it. Dream of it. Live on that idea. Let the brain, muscles, nerves, every part of your body be full of that idea. And just leave every other idea alone. This is the way to success. So I won't take this again, which is not my normal self. So it's self-explanatory. I want you to think on it, breathe on it, and let's hear what something and Perpetual has to say. Perpetual, I think it's self-explanatory. It just helps you to break it all down. Mm -hmm. You have an idea. Do not just stop at having an idea. Work on it. Just mm -hmm. do all you need to do so that it moves from ideation to reality. Yeah, mm. that's it. You have to exhaust it. Mm. It's just what it is. You don't just you know leave it to a point and then you you ignore it. You have to see it through. Sometimes though it will be challenging, but just commit to it. All right. So there was an adage and also a song that says that mm -hmm. um, the the richest place is the graveyard where people die with their ideas, where people yeah. die with their gifts and their talents. You don't want to be one of those. Person, exactly. we would all die someday at the ripe age, as our ripe ages. But then, make sure you exhaust every opportunity God has given to you, every idea you have, every gift and talent. Just so when you're dying, you're dying happy and empty too. All right, thank you so much for joining us. More promises to be amazing for you. After now, other shows comes up on Ivan TV.